the latest from Sydney, we've got Michael Rowland stationed at the exclusion zone in Martin Place and reporter Rachel Papazzoni is at the RPA hospital in the cities in the west. Uh, good morning to you both. Uh, first to Michael Rowland. Michael, what's it like there now? Uh, you're standing just outside the exclusion zone. Presumably there are some workers returning to work around you. Yes, life is returning to normal, Joe. Good morning. Oh, I'm standing on the corner of Phillip and Hunter Street. Uh, as many of our Sydney viewers would know, it is right in the heart of the CBD, about 100 metres down the road from the Lint Cafe, just over my left shoulder, where those harrowing events played out over the course of the last day and a half. Uh, yeah, there is a sense of normalcy here, normalcy here. There's lots of people walking past the police barricades just behind me, stopping simply for a moment of reflection as they look at uh, the Lint Cafe, which of course is still the subject of police investigations. There is still a cordon around the uh, inner streets of where Martin Place is. That cordon has been pulled back from where it was even in the early hours this morning and late last night as that situation unfolded. So uh, people here in Sydney are getting back to normal, Joe, but I think it's going to be a, a fair bit of time before the, the psychological effects for many of what took place here will be erased. Yeah. And uh, Rachel Papazzoni, what, what is the situation with the, the number of injured from this? We understand it was four of the hostages and one policeman. What's happened, uh, Joe, is my understanding of, of those numbers is um, uh, three people injured uh, in, in the altercation that ensued yep. about 2 a.m. this morning, Sydney time, and one woman who was taken to hospital for a pre-existing right. medical condition. The people who were brought to hospital as a result of the confrontation that we've seen those pictures of uh, today, two women who were taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, uh, the police officer who uh, sustained... a uh, uh, gunshot, um, excuse me, gunshot pellet wounds to his face. Uh, we heard the commissioner mentioning there that he, he's likely to be in hospital for some time. And then the, the last uh, victim is a 34-year-old woman who was shot in the shoulder. I'm at RPA Hospital uh, in Camperdown, which is not too far from Sydney's CBD, where uh, we, we've been here since before 4am this morning we've seen a, a number of paramedics and ambulances come in and police have been here all morning. They, they left probably about an hour ago and it was about that time that a spokesperson from the hospital informed us that there were now no longer any people who were caught up in this hostage situation in RPA hospital. Uh, that leads me to believe, to, to, to suspect that there are other, that some of those victims are at other hospitals. Uh, St Vincent's has been uh, named as one hospital where uh, I believe the, the people who escaped earlier yesterday were taken for a checkup. So perhaps uh, some, some of the people who were wounded uh, this morning are at St Vincent's. Yep. And uh, Michael, back to you in the CBD. Uh, that media conference that we heard from Andrew Scipione about uh, just before six o'clock this morning, it was the first time he'd been specific with the actual numbers involved, hadn't it? Uh, we, uh, originally, he'd been a bit reticent to say exactly how many people were inside there. And when, when you heard that number 17, obviously there are, there are family and friends dealing with the loss of, loss of two loved ones this morning. But uh, that when he came, when he mentioned that number of 17, you, you realise just how much worse his situation could have been. Indeed, uh, 17 hostages, including those five hostages who escaped in dramatic circumstances late yesterday afternoon, Joe. And that exactly was the point Commissioner Scipioni was making as he explained the circumstances in those final seconds leading up to those heavily armed police making the call to, to storm the building and to free the hostages. Skip, Commissioner Scipioni said he did not want any more hostages exposed to any greater danger. Now, he said that as well as saying that uh, police decided to go in because they first heard gunshots. They heard gunshots from inside the building, presumably from the gunman, and it was after hearing those gunshots that uh, the action plan swung into motion and they decided to go in. To, uh, to save the lives of as many hostages as they could. So, yeah, there were quite a number of people they were playing with. It is enormously tragic that we uh, have uh, a 34-year-old man and a 38-year-old woman dying in an exchange of gunfire. It is still not clear the circumstances surrounding their deaths, Joe, because uh, yeah. Commissioner Scipioni was uh, vague, whether deliberately vague or not, on that, uh, whether those hostages 
died uh, before police went in uh, as a result of gunshots from the gunman or they died in an exchange of fire when police did go in. That'll obviously be the focus of ongoing investigations and we'll hopefully get more details on the exact sequence of events as we go through the morning. And uh, Rachel, back to you at Camp Down. Have authorities been specific on the nature of the injuries to the two of the other hostages? We've heard that one of the female hostages, you mentioned three injured in the actual incident, uh, one, one with uh, gunshot wounds to the, soldier, the shoulder. Um, have authorities been specific on the injuries to the other two hostages? No, they haven't. Uh, the, the, the line that they've given is that they ha came to hospital with non-life-threatening yeah. injuries. What we saw earlier, Joe, was um, a number of people uh, leaving the uh, emergency department here at RPA. Uh, one woman got into the front seat of a car uh, with a jacket over her face uh, and, and she was dri driven away um, at the same time. Other people were getting into other cars. They were escorted away from police. My feeling is that perhaps that was when the two women who, who had the, the lesser injuries left, that perhaps they were among those people who left uh, the hospital a little earlier. They walked out. So if that is the case, then uh, I can only assume that their injuries were not too bad, that they've yeah. left hospital this morning. But of course, th th this is physical injuries, Joe, and um, everyone who's been caught up in this hostage drama will be going through much more than just physical pain at the moment. And uh, Michael, just back to you finally in the, in the CBD, I noticed you were talking to Clover Moore a little earlier this morning. Uh, what's the sense there now in the Sydney CBD about obviously uh, grieving over the, the loss of these people in this terrible incident there, but uh, the C Sydney trying to get back together and get on its feet again? Yeah, lots, lots of moments of uh, private grief, private reflection, but also a uh, determination which was expressed so well by both Clover Moore and Mike Baird this morning, a determination to get life back to normal as quickly as possible. We have seen uh, wreaths of flowers uh, put down at the edge of Martin Place, just metres from the Lint Cafe. In fact, I'm just told by somebody who uh, laid some flowers herself that uh, the number of flowers is steadily building and will probably continue to build over the course of this morning. Obviously, Sydney side is paying tribute to those two hostages who died. We have uh, the flags on the top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge flying at half-mast. There will be time for uh, grief, there will be time for reflection, there's certainly going to be a lot of time for a police investigation into what happened, but uh, I think Clover Moore summed it up perfectly when uh, she said that uh, this fantastic city, this big bustling city, is certainly not going to be cowed by what has happened here tragically in that cafe just behind me. OK, Michael Rowland there reporting from the Sydney CBD and Rachel Papazzoni at RBA Hospital in Camperdown. Thank you. Now, the